Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa was presently on a four-day visit to India, visited Banaras. He offered prayers at the famous Kashi Vishwanath Temple and also praised the work that is ongoing for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's dream project of the Kashi Vishwanath Corridor. Now, this, of course, is being described as India's soft diplomacy at play. Rajapaksa is visiting the holiest sites of Buddhism in India, Bodh Gaya and Sarnath. And this, of course, is, is a photo opportunity for the Lankan Prime Minister, who, of course, has been pushing forth a very strong Buddhist Sinhala agenda back home in his own nation. Now, as a part of his tour, Rajapaksa also visited the Kashi Vishwanath Temple in Banaras before heading out 10 kilometers to the city of the Buddhist Stupa at Sarnath. At Sarnath, Rajapaksa paid tributes at the Dhamek Stupa where Lord Buddha gave his first sermon to his five disciples after having attained enlightenment. On the 10th of February, he'll be flying to Bihar, that is today. And he'll be visiting the Mahabodhi Temple, which marks the spot where Gautama Buddha is said to have attained enlightenment. After this, he'll proceed to the southern city of Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh where he'll be visiting the very famous temple there. And with this, he'll be bringing an end to his India tour and is expected to fly back to Colombo on the 12th of February. Now, India knows the pilgrimage offers the Sinhalese Prime Minister an opportunity to India himself in his Buddhist majority nation. As for India, historical links to the Theravada Buddhism, which is majorly practiced in Sri Lanka, offers a good position to further the relations with Colombo. It's a part of the Indian government's plan to use soft power assets in India, such as Buddhism, for the resonance that it lends to foreign policy, especially in Asia, deepening ties with Asian nations on the basis of Buddhism. And this could, of course, potentially feed into the larger policy objectives of the government, namely the neighborhood first policy and the act east policy. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also made it a point to make Buddhism a regular feature of his diplomatic visits. The Buddhism has been critical in the bilateral ties between the two countries given the claims of Tamils in Sri Lanka of persecution in the name of religion and ethnicity which led to a civil war. Now, both the leaders have repeatedly acknowledged that they need to look at the tenets of peace found in Buddhism not only to solve internal strife but also to try and ease tensions in international waters. Remember. Prime Minister Modi has expressed confidence in Rajapaksa's government to ensure equality, justice and peace for Tamils in Sri Lanka. And this has been a key point of contention between India and Sri Lanka. The manner in which the Tamil minority is being treated by the Sri Lankans is, of course, a pretty thorny issue there. Now, India has also requested the Sri Lankans to show a more humanitarian approach towards the Indian fishermen who are frequently arrested by the Sri Lankan Navy for breaching what Sri Lanka describes as its territorial waters in the Park Strait. But there is, of course, a huge dispute in terms of that. In terms of finding a common ground, both India and Sri Lanka have faced the wrath of terrorism. The island nation had most recently, in the Easter bombings, which took place last year, witnessed one of its worst terror attacks. On Easter Sunday, three churches and luxury hotels were targeted in a series of suicide bombings in Colombo. Foreign policy observers are saying that Sri Lanka and India could find common cause with a crucial Buddhist connection to try and fight radical Islam. It's being said that the religious places for Rajapaksa's tour have been very carefully hand-picked to reflect the Hindu-Buddhist unity between the two nations.